In this tutorial I will show you different methods of animating numbers in After Effects. In the description I will provide a link to my blog where I will write a little bit more details on each setup and as well I will provide a link to the project file with the, all the setups including demo files as well to be able to actually like dissect them and see how I set everything up. To animate numbers in After Effects, the easiest way to do it is to do it with a text layer. And the way you do this, you simply add a slider to it. Okay, and then you link your source text to a slider control. And when you create a bunch of keyframes, you number animate. As you can see, this method gives you some problems to fix mainly lots of uh, decimal points after your number you want to animate. So how do we combat that? So the very basic setup is um, you have a slider and add expression to your source text. An expression looks like this. So what we're doing is basically feeding the slider into a variable, which I tend to do, so then I can easily use it later on in different expressions. So in this case, I'm rounding up this number basically using method round expression. And the whole thing is animated only with three keyframes. Now this method works in most cases, but what if you want to have a bunch of decimal points after your number? Simply, you need to multiply your number by a number of decimal points you want after your well, number itself. In this case, um, I want to go all the way to a thousandth, and then divide by it. Now if I play this, as you can see, this method works fine, but at some times the expression rounds up the numbers to two decimal points or one or three, and it's not very precise. As you can see, the text keeps swinging left and right all the time. So the method I like to use most is this one. So basically you link your source text to a slider, which is this one over here, and simply add value dot to fix and the number of decimal points you want. So what it means is, you're getting the value from this slide itself, so just basically the whole numbers, and then adding three decimal points. This way I can add something like five, and it will still work. As you can see, this method is very consistent because the decimal points always stay the same. Now what if in the, your animation you want to add a bunch of prefixes or suffixes to your text? For example, uh, dollar signs or percentage, or any other custom word, and you want it to be animated all together with your number itself, like fade from left to right and so on using the text animators over here. So the way you do this is basically you're adding your words or any kind of text or any kind of prefix and suffix in quotation marks to your number animation. So the expression is basically I'm linking my source text to a slider, putting this into a variable, and then later on in the last line, I'm simply adding prefixes or suffixes as actual words in the quotation mark. And After Effects processes it in a way that it adds the text you want to display at the beginning, your number, and then your suffix. Now, for example, I can remove this completely, and it updates. Spaces work the same. So if you want to have a gap in between your word and the text, this is the way you can do it very, very easily. There you go. Now, what if you want to animate a really large number? Because the sliders are good for animating anything um, in the value from zero to a million or zero to minus a million, but you want to go beyond for whatever reason. So I have two examples here. One is slider driven and one is driven by angle control itself. By angle control, I mean simple angle control in After Effects. And then I'm linking the source text to this angle control. In this case, I have already one setup here called angle number. And the expression is exactly the same as previously. It's we're feeding the angle control into a variable because I like to put everything into variables themselves, even if it's a single line. I'm getting the value and then, and then I'm telling After Effects to add two decimal points at the end. I can change this to like five. And as you can see, this updates automatically. Now, the way you animate the angle control is a little bit tricky. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say I want to animate it from zero. 
all the way to 100 million. The way you want to do this is simply select your degrees over here, add your keyframe, and then if you want to change it for whatever reason, go, go forward in time, zero this one out, and then add your new keyframe here. And After Effects will basically do all the calculation um, required for you to get this large number. And as you can see, this updates very, very quickly and very, very easily. And this whole thing works the same if you want to add like any suffixes or prefixes to your number as well, like this. It just, just works perfectly. Yeah, and it even recognizes the gap over here, as I mentioned, the space. Now, what if your animation requires to have a bunch of commas or dots every third number, like normally you would see in um, Excel spreadsheets of sorts? Now, the expression for this looks like this, which is a little bit more complex, but Sergey from Ukraine Media created a really, really good um, explanation video about this, and I will link it below. If for whatever reason you would like to have a comma every fourth digit, you need to modify this number and the comma automatically moves. If you want to change the comma to something else, like for example, a question mark, you can do this by modifying this expression in the quotation marks. On my website, I will provide a write-up what each one of these guys mean. But if you want to learn more about this, I recommend checking out this website, regex, because these values are actually regular expressions or regex for short. And on this website, you can actually copy and paste the code and really learn what each one of them means in detail. So this covers kind of most of the setups, right? We have basically a, a number animated from zero to thousands. We have a, a, a comma every 30 digits, like in Excel expression and so on. We have our two decimal points at the end. But what if you go negative? Once I had a client where I had to animate numbers going from positive to negative and add custom uh, prefix with like, for example, Bitcoin sign to it. And the client didn't like the fact that prefix was before the minus sign. Now with this expression, you can't really do much. You have to change it a bit because the function simply adds a comma every third digit, as you can see. So how does, how you can fix this? I took Sergey's expression, initial one, the, um, the function to add commas, and then added another replace function to it. So let me explain how it works. This is the most complex setup and works for very specific cases, but it was very useful when I needed it. You can see the numbers going from positive to negative, and then the Bitcoin sign stays next to the number itself, and then the minus sign appears afterwards. Okay, so what's going on here? So same thing as before, we have variable, which is linked to a slider on this layer itself. There you go. I don't need this angle number anymore. So this slider, which drives the whole animation. Then I'm adding another variable, which is actually our prefix, the Bitcoin. You can change this to something like dollar sign. And if I apply this, it would automatically update itself, right? So this function is basically transforms these values into a string and then replaces, or rather in this case, inserts a comma every third digit. Now for the specific cases, if you want to add a minus sign to the beginning of your uh, number string and then add a prefix like dollar sign in this case, you, what I'm doing is basically, I'm putting basically a search term uh, in essence. So this function looks for the minus sign, this one, globally across the whole string. And then what it does is after a comma, you put what you want it to do. So I wanted to add, add a minus sign and a space and then add my var and my variable, which is a prefix. So for example, if I want to change this to something like minus and add this here, there you go, it works. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to the previous one. So this is what this function does in essence, but we have to basically 
feed values into x over here. So what I did, I declared two final variables. One is positive and one is negative. So positive variable basically adds a prefix to our number string, then runs the whole function by adding commas after every third letter. And it still does the whole two decimal points at the end. Negative function simply runs this whole function as is. If the values are negative, the function will simply do the first part, which is adding the comma every third number. And then it will replace the minus, or the, uh, which will appear literally before the dollar sign and inserts another minus and our dollar sign. So basically it does the swap. So how do you tell After Effects when to use one or the other? It's very simple. You simply use an if else statement. In this case, if the number, this value, is bigger or equal to zero, use the positive. In any other instance, which means negative, use negative number. So this is a little bit complex, but hopefully it makes sense. Um, I'll provide a little bit more explanation on my website, on the blog. But this was a very specific case I had to do a few times, and it was really useful to have this expression built in with the slider control as a preset. Sometimes I have to animate numbers in a way that they change color. For example, from going from green when they're positive to red when they're negative. So how do you do that? Simply, you want to add an animator, like RGB, to your text. Right, I'm gonna delete it because I already have one. And add an expression to the color property of your animator. So this is how the expression looks like. And what it does, it references two color controls on this layer, this text layer itself, and a slider which controls the whole animation. Now, if I show you how it looks, it's basically you have a slider, right? It controls the animation, and one color control and the second one, which I rename color one, color two. This is what I mean by color control. It's just simple color control um, effect. So going back to expression, you're defining your variables, which you want to use. And then I'm just doing a logical operation. I'm checking if the slider itself is bigger or equal to zero. And if it is bigger than zero or equal to, I want it to be green, right? As you can see. In any other instance, which means it's less than zero, I want to use second color, which turns red. And that's how you animate your numbers and make them change color when they go from positive to negative. Thanks for watching, and you can read more about those setups on my website, or you'll be able to copy and paste all those expressions and as well play with the After Effects file I'll provide for free on Gamroad.